when you look at the structure of the face, right? The ideal face is actually an oval face. The human body is actually very proportionate and very harmonious and you can measure you know, I don't even know, like the head is the side, like there's eight heads in the body or whatever. No, I'm talking about, it's all about symmetry. If my video editor can show that picture here of David, something about David, and then <laughs> when you look at your face, you can obviously divide your face in the middle. And so there's equal blocks here. So this is block number one from the top of your forehead to the middle of your eyebrows. This is block number one. Block number two is from the middle of your eyebrows until the end of your nose and block number three is until from the end of your nose un, until the, the the end of your chin and so these three sections of your face they're supposed to be all in the equal um length your face then is divided in six parts like that and the trick here which is really interesting this is how you actually do this color well color correction and stuff like that which is very simple so i want you to look in your face in the mirror right now pause this video and measure you can actually literally measure it's so scientific but very simple so i can see i know this because i've done this before i can see that this distance here like from my four and they all have to be equal for you to have um a, a symmetrical proportional face and beauty actually is all about harmony and the symmetry and you can develop a sense of style and beauty as well that's why I love this work it's a skill that you build but these three parts have to be equal in length and your face has to also be oval right and if and there's a, but, but obviously hello we're all we're all born imperfect and then that's actually the beauty of it because imagine I like when I was listening to Yelena she said something really cool because, and now I understand why, when you look at women who've done plastic surgery, they go to do plastic surgery and when plastic surgeons work on their face so they can look symmetrical and in harmony. So for example, if you look at my face, right? And every face is imperfect. And when these doctors bring the features together, like for harmonious face, you can see that the women who have plastic surgery, they all start to look the same. Why? Because these plastic surgeons are trying to create a beautiful, symmetric, oval face, which is, if, we're, if we would all have these kind of faces, we would all look the same, literally like dolls, but, but we don't. And that's the beauty in it. And so for me personally, when I had that aha moment, I didn't want to be like anyone else. And that's what, like the makeup for me is now, an expression of myself rather than trying to look like a Kim Kardashian or trying to look like somebody else because it will never look the same because my face is extremely unique and I just use these tools to make my face look how I want it to look and, and bring it to that more harmonious state not using plastic surgery but using makeup tools if you look at, at, at my face and I want you to analyze yours you can see you can clearly see and this is where, and every woman has like this thing that she doesn't like about her face, but you can clearly see that this part, okay, so let's say from the forehead to here, if I go here, I can see that this part here is actually shorter. And I can also see that my nose is long, it's a, it's a really long nose. So if I were to do plastic surgery, for example, I would actually just take out the tip of my nose, but I don't need to do that. But then this part I know that is, is pretty much symmetrical. If I had a shorter nose, my face would actually look a little bit better, a little bit more symmetrical. Let's look at the shape of my face as well. My face, I've been lucky uh, to have pretty much an oval face. When you look at mine, I want you to look at your face or take a photo and analyze it. Actually take a photo, print it if you can. And then, or on your phone, and then draw, you gotta draw and you gotta look at what's the what's the what's the shape of your face. And I can see that you see how here I have actually square, a little bit square, and I'll show you how we can correct that. And my chin is pointy. And so, if I were to do a correct, if I were to do plastic surgery, here's what I would have done: I would sh shorten my nose a little bit. And then I would actually round, I would round my, um, my chin and I would round things here. And I also feel like 
Well, you see how my face is actually elongated, but this could be corrected with the chin. But I also learned that the distance between the two eyes has to be the same as one eye. So if one eye fits in between your two eyes, then your eyes, the distance between your eyes is proportionate. But if not, so for example, mm, I think mine is actually, is actually the same, but I see that it's a, that it's a little bit shorter. So, so my job with makeup is to extend my eyes to the sides. When you look at women who are really beautiful, when that's what makeup artists do. Makeup artists sit on your, with your face and look at your face and they use these tools of makeup to manipulate uh, shadows and it's actually all about shadows and, and light um, to bring out your best features and then apply and then all, after that only you apply color and stuff like that. So, so your job is to ask yourself, what is the shape of my face? And how do I make it an oval? This is actually freaking math. Okay, if you have been bad at math, this is not for you. But so if you have a round face, then how do you make an oval out of a, out of a circle? Well, you, you darken or you delete the side so it can become an oval. If you have a square face, how do you make an oval? Well, you darken or you delete the squares, right? So I'm gonna show you how this works. But for me, I know that you know, I, I know that this is a little bit square, so I need to round here. And I know that my chin is a little bit pointy, so I need to round here. And I also know that my nose, so when you divide it into three, you can see like, if this, if, the, if your forehead is a lot bigger, then you need to shorten your forehead. And if your nose, like mine, is bigger, you need to shorten your nose. And personally for me, for my lips, for example, as you can see, my top lip is actually smaller than the big one. And the most important thing I want to, maybe this does make sense, but I want you to take out of this is that, that we are, we are going towards an ideal and we'll never be ideal and perfect, but we can try and you'll see before and after for me, and you can try to get there with the tools that makeup gives us. And so my job here would be to, um, to enlarge, the either to enlarge the top lip or to make smaller the bottom lip okay so let's let's get into how well the, the first thing that i know that i've been taught is you can actually use a concealer to lighten up the areas that you want to you want to bring in and it's all about this correction i call it correction phase of makeup after you apply foundation it might look complicated but honestly this part takes me five minutes now that i know what to do with it so and you can honestly i advise here's what you need to do because it's really hard to do this on your own. I actually took, oh, I've got to tell you, I took an online consultation with a makeup artist who helped me with all of this. Because if you're sitting there watching or listening to me being like, Anna Rova, this is freaking rocket science. <laughs> do what I did. So for, for fashion and style, what I recommend all of my clients is to work with a stylist. Because you can spend so much time and actually money trying to learn it on your own. But if you work with a professional, a professional who can tell you, who can help you realize what is your body size, what is your body shape, what kind of shapes you should wear, what kind of colors look good on you, and all of that, you'd hack the process and it's going to be so much easier. Same thing with your face and your makeup. Get a woman, a professional makeup artist who can not only like, okay, I'm going to do some makeup on you, but actually teach you about your face. I had a professional consultation exactly on top. She's like, Okay, your chin is pointy, you need to lower your chin. You need to round these things, you need to bring your eyes outwards, you need to do your nose, but that, that was also after I educated myself, so I understand this. So for you, fun, and honestly, I paid like 60 bucks for it, I mean, not more than 80, I think, for an hour. Like, invest in this, and it's gonna change your life. Because the principle is, let's talk about this. First, we highlight the stuff that we wanna highlight. So you would actually use a concealer to do your under eyes, to do the T-zones. I don't really do it because for me, it's like an extra step and whatever, but, uh, but I'll do it with you. So, um, so you could, because I've done, you know, for my face, for example, I already done um, my under eye CC cream. So here you go. I've done it on my face, then I'm gonna do the T-zone here. And you basically do this, so you, the whole makeup stuff is all about playing with shadows and light. I also like to use it around my nose, so you do this, 
then you lighten up a little bit um, like your upper lip. Well, I think this is pretty much it, right? So what you do after that is the correction. And so let's play with shadows and how can you manipulate the face? You can use different products. And by the way, it was really interesting when I went to the market here to, to the makeup stores here in Australia, you'll see, I never understood what are those like, how do you, I don't even know how you call them, like correction kits are for? Like, what do you, what is this for? You know, the, the brown, <laughs> the brown stuff or like bronzers and shit. Like, I didn't understand what they're for. And what I like and the trend is now, I, I didn't talk about, I think I talked about trends. Like, it's all about natural, but there's also this wet effect, like this dewy, glowy effect. And we're going to do it today and I'm going to show you how. So it's all depends on trends, but I really like this effect. And so I like the textures of my makeup to be, uh, not liquid, but soft. This is basically blush, blush, yeah? So there are different textures in makeup. One of them is powder and the other one is liquid. And this is actually, I, I bought it because I'm experiencing, I'm experimenting with it. Rose Ink, uh, Rosie, what's her name? Rosie something something celebrity girl who's married to this hot guy. <laughs> but these are different textures. So one of them is powder right that you put on a brush and put it on one of them is actually like let me show you um like like a, like a liquid and, and this is where everything is going right now so the trends are that the makeup it, what you apply for the makeup is liquid this is thin one right because i can use this on my lips i can use it as my blush and i can use it as my eyeshadow this is my monochrome makeup and this is the everyday no makeup makeup so I prefer, and the trends are right now, how you achieve this dewy look is by using, uh, not liquid, but not powder texture. It's not liquid, but it's like a cream, creamy texture. I would suggest cream if you can find, this is actually, this is actually a pigment that I got from Krigina. This is a Russian product. I, I actually wouldn't recommend this because this is really hard to, to use and manipulate. But essentially this is like literally, like a liquid thing and it works like that so you put a little bit it's highly pigmented but if you can find a corrector according to your shade and make sure you consult with a specialist in the store that's like this but only in um like a shadow it's called i think shadow uh corrector or something so what i do i put a little bit but if if it, if, if, if you were working i would actually I'm going to look for an alternative to these pigments because it's not easy for me to use. I would love to have something like this that I could just work with. I take a brush and then what I do, I, because this is highly pigmented, I just use a tiny little bit and sometimes I put too much. But anyways, this is going to come with experience. But what I do, okay, so let's begin with the first thing that I do actually. So if you look at your face, you know, you always want to look these parts under your cheek so this is what we're going to blush but under your cheek is oh my god i don't know the the english word for this i know it in russian but this part under your cheeks is actually the part that you want to shade and this is actually following the natural light so if you look at me when i talk you see how when i talk this part actually it's you're just following the natural light and shadow and how it falls on your face so what i'm going to do here i'm just gonna provide or do a little bit more a little bit more shadow and see i just fucked it up on this part so i'm just gonna blend it and sometimes like if you put too much don't worry about it because you're still learning as i am um you just put a little bit of concealer but basically what you do is you just put a little bit so that you can add a little bit of shadow so that this part of your face which is you know the plump one the, the the your cheeks can come out then the next thing what i do i actually then go so i think well everybody should just uh darken this spot so add a bit of and you know the more you put into it the more your face is going to become con oh contour oh my god correction contour introducing if you can get a cream contour that applies to your skin color obviously just apply a little bit like this under your cheeks and then the next part of the contour you start to contour and correct your face so i know for me you see how this chin is pointy so what i do i just lightly do it under my chin 
And so if you do this right, then you will see how my chin visually, like from a distance, and you can see that from a distance, these parts here have already been, a I have a little bit more shadow here, so it gives me contour to my face. That's why you look at all these models and they're like, perfect and amazing. That's the makeup, the power of makeup. And so, you know, for me, right now and and you won't see it obviously from here but overall when you do this and it works together then visually this is all like visual manipulation this is like photoshop in real life so you do this and then what i'm going to do the next and maybe you need to add a little bit more but i'm going to start lightly the next thing remember how i said this part of my face is a little bit square so i make it a little bit round like this and then you kind of overall, you see how I'm doing? So for example, if I had a round face, I'd really work on removing these parts of the round face so it can, the, remember the ideal is the oval. Then the next thing I do, remember how my nose is too, too big, too long. So what I do, I just, I hope you understand this principle. This is like freaking drawing 101. <laughs> but what I do is I actually just, just um, darken the tip like just under it the tip of my nose and so what I've done is very simple here I rounded my forehead I rounded rounded my chin because I have a really pointy chin and you can you can still see it with the neck you can do the same thing if you want your neck to be longer and thinner you're just working with shadows remember so with the neck and you just use a little bit here so add a bit of shadow here. You can also add a bit of shadow on the sides of your nose. So your nose is, a, so if you have a big nose, let's say wide, you just shadow here and see, yeah. So the next thing that I do actually, because for me, the difference between my eyes, the distance between my eyes is too small. I need to wide my eyes. And how do I wide my eyes? I'm actually gonna do like a, think of it like a smoky eye effect. So with the same contouring color, I'm gonna go underneath my eyes, and by the way, also this is, if you can also make your eyes bigger, uh, and there's different techniques, so I'm just gonna do it here. But what I'm doing, I'm basically going around the eye, and I'm extending it here. Do you see what I'm doing? Like, extending my eye with this shadow, so that my eye has a visual effect of being, so see, Okay, look at this side, and look at this side, and look at this side. You see the difference already? It's a subtle difference, but you can see how this eye is kind of like opening up and going to the side, and that's what I'm gonna do here as well. So I've done this, I'm gonna do a little bit more on my nose. And then the last thing, the lips. The lips actually, to be honest with you, I always skip this part because this is where it's like too much freaking work for me. <laughs> but. Remember how I said that my lips, um, like the top lip is actually bigger than the bottom one? What I'm gonna do, I'm actually going to contour the upper lip and a little bit the, the lower lip so that it gives me, so I'll do it like that, like just over the lip. It gives me the effect of a bigger upper lip. You can already see a little bit that my upper lip has become bigger. Yeah, and again, you know, if I was a makeup artist, you would probably see the big difference, but I wanna share a hack with you that I learned. Most women forget the tips of the lips, so the lips actually don't end where you see them. The lips end at the corners of the lips. So what you do, you're gonna to have to take this same contour and you're actually gonna to have to extend so I'm gonna do it here. You're gonna to have to extend the corners of your lips so you can accentuate the corners of your lips and that's how you make your lips bigger. No need for plastic surgery, girlfriend, because you can do it all at, at, at your home and holy shit, why nobody's teaching that? I don't know, maybe my video will go viral. I think this is it, girlfriends.